Welcome to Bamford Rose and it's forum chat time. In this week's forum chat, I've picked up a discussion about a ticking V8 engine. Uh, sounds like it could be the tappet shims in the valve train causing the engine to exhibit a bit of a ticking sound. So let's have a look at the comment. It says the Vantage, which was purchased three years ago, had the infamous engine tick from the bucket shim. Spoken with three different professionals in regards to their knowledge on it and they summed it up as no detrimental effects to the engine. Well, we'll come on to that later. Just annoying if the sound bothers you. It hasn't got any worse, but the owner is gonna take it in next week for diagnostics. And he asks anyone in the group if they've had similar experience. So if the V8 engine is gonna exhibit a little bit of tap it rattle, then at idle, that's where you're probably most likely gonna hear this. Now it's gonna be a light metallic -y type tapping noise. Now the V8 engine does radiate noises all around the engine bay quite easily. But generally speaking, if it's the tappet shims that are an issue, you should be able to hear that louder from above when a bonnet is open, rather than putting your head underneath the underside of the car, just behind the front wheel. And you can hear an engine noise if it's from the bottom end, uh, coming out from uh, the bottom of the car more prominently. So if it's tappet shims, you're gonna more prominently hear it coming from the top of the engine. As you very lightly go on and off the throttle, maybe just resting your foot on the throttle, getting the engine revs to go from 750 idle to about 1250, 1350 RPM, and then back off again and keep going on and off, on and off the throttle. It's at that condition that you will promote the tappet shim to occur, if it is tappet shims that are causing the noise. If you were to hold the engine revs at 2000, 3000 RPM, then you get so much mechanical thrash type harsh noise out of the engine that that will most likely drown out a tappet shim and you won't really hear the tappet shim tapping above the mechanical thrash of the engine. The cam bucket and tappet shim to camshaft has a set clearance which you stick your feeler gauge into and that clearance has a tolerance of what can be the upper limit and lower limit. So if someone, a professional, is going to assess this then what they need to do is park the car up cold overnight and the next morning they come to it, take the cam covers off and measure the clearance of all inlet and all exhaust valves. The inlet valve clearance on the VA is 0.18 to 0.22 millimeters. The exhaust valve clearance is 0.23 millimeters to 0.27 millimeters and the tolerance on both of those is plus minus 0.02 millimeters. If a number of valves were at that upper end of clearance then that results in listening to an engine and anyone with any mechanical sympathy would realize that that engine needs attention because it sounds pretty gruff. So between 0.25 millimeters and 0.27 millimeters clearance, there will be a period of time where the engine has the onset of a tick and the tick develops in terms of its severity. So if the professional wasn't gonna let it go cold overnight and measure the clearances and they were just gonna make an off the cuff statement about how serious the problem was, then it would be no more scientific than knowing what an excessive valve clearance sounds like and worst case rattling compared to the tapping that uh, that particular car might have and saying, well, you've got a bit to go yet before you reach the clearance where you're really forced to do something about it because it sounds so horrible. This is a good one for dealers when the car is under warranty to bat away and say, well, they're all a bit like that. The engines all sound a bit harsh. There's nothing to fix on your car. Those cars come here and I can tell straight away that a certain level of ticking will be above the clearance and outside of tolerance. So we keep the car overnight, measure valve clearances, give that data to the customer, and they've got something to beat the dealer over the head with to say, well, here you go, here's your own spec. This is in the build manual, my car's above it. Fix the car for me under warranty, thank you very much. Why it turns into this level of discussion is because of the cost to fix the problem. If it was the exhaust valves that were outside of tolerance, that can be done with the engine in situ, take the cam cover off, you can gain access to the exhaust cam, take the chain off, it's driven by the inlet cam on a chain, remove the exhaust cam, change the 
tap its shims in situ, stick it all back together again, and probably for up to two days labor, typically 1600 pounds, and up to 300 quids worth of shims, gaskets, consumables. With VAT, an exhaust tappet shim problem is managed for about 2,250 pounds. The big discussion comes if it's inlet valves that are measured to have excessive clearance. The inlet cam has the variable valve timing unit on the end of it and you can't take the cam out with that unit attached and get it past the timing cover. So to extract the inlet cam, you have to take the front cover off. To take the front cover off, you either have to drop the subframe, remove a load of ancillary parts to gain access to the front cover, and then be able to take the front cover off, jack the engine up, get the front pulley over the cross member, or do it the easier way, which is to take the engine out. So take the engine out, take the engine out of the frame, strip the engine down enough to remove the inlet cam, reshim all tappets, stick it back together again, stick the engine in the frame, stick the frame back in the car. That's probably around 50 hours labor, which give or take is 5,000 pounds. And with up to 1,000 pounds worth of tappet shims, gasket seals, consumables, and the dreaded VAT, then that's probably in the order of seven, 7,500 pounds. So the last thing to mention on this subject is can you leave the engine and drive the car, put some miles on it with a bit of tapping at idle. You'll probably not notice it as speed increases because the sound gets drowned out by the mechanical thrash and there'd be no consequence. Unfortunately, that answer is in the realms of crystal ball. And let's have a look at the hardware to understand why. So this is the exhaust cam. See the chain which gets a drive from the inlet cam, and this can be extracted out the front of the engine, no problem. The issue is this variable valve timing unit here, which will not extract out the front cover, which sits about there, which is the reason why if the tappet shims were out of spec on the inlet cam, the engine has to come out of the car. So this is a tappet bucket shim, which sits inside the cylinder head. The underside of it will contact the valve head. This side will contact the camshaft. And here is where we put a feeler gauge in to measure for the clearance. Now the issue is mainly all of these outer bucket shims are standard. And if you see inside there in the middle is the actual thickness of each individual shim. Now it's this tappet shim internally within the bucket which becomes dislodged and not seating properly, which causes the excess clearance to be measured here between the cam and the bucket, which is causing the ticking sound. But the louder the tapping sound becomes and the more out of tolerance it is getting, probably means the more compromised the actual shim sitting in the bucket is. And if it becomes completely dislodged, then there will be quite a massive clearance there and that will sound awful. So prolonging running the engine in this ticking state is just risking a complete failure of this component, which is obviously bad. So the professional that you take your engine to, you really need them to be measuring what the clearance actually is and sussing out whether it's intolerance. If they are super experienced and like me you can pretty much audibly tell the difference between a tapping sound but the valve is only just out of tolerance or it's a very severe sound and the professional is telling you to get it fixed then if the professional doesn't measure what the clearances are then essentially all you're getting from them is their appreciation through their experience of whether it's severe or less severe. Of course, on the V8 engine, especially early 4.7s, there can be oil scavenge and the dry sump pump chain and tensioner system, which causes a bit of chattering. It's important to differentiate the tap it sound away from it being that by chance. If you're a critical owner and new to the car, then uh, it's important to understand what injector ticking sounds like. So quite loud on those V8s. And if you are used to a silky smooth, quiet running engine from a different manufacturer, and you come to the Aston and you can hear it sounding a bit agricultural, then those injectors tick away like crazy. So important to make sure that you're not falsely uh, hearing injector tick, thinking that it's something mechanical. Can't really be anything more serious in the bottom end because if it was big end bearing, crank to connecting rod, or piston or 
small end bush where then that develops into something terminal pretty quick. Hope you like this week's forum chat. Really helps us if you can comment, subscribe to our channel, and we look forward to seeing you on the next forum chat.